They just don't make them like they used to. As tired as that statement is, I can think of no better medium to apply it to than the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! products. Frankly, Yu-Gi-Oh! products are just boring nowadays. Every year we essentially get the same thing. A Megatin, a few new structure decks, something tied to Legendary Duelists, a Collector Rare or Battles of Legend set, and a few core sets. The only glimmer of creativity we can look forward to is when we get something like Magnificent Mavens, Premium Gold, or a Ghost from the Past specialty set. But even with those examples, they really aren't that far off from a Megatin in their composition. I still fondly remember how much better older products were. Okay, Boomer. Collector tins themed around a set of monsters like the Dragon Rulers and the old protagonist Ace Monsters. Special and deluxe edition box sets, which speaking of, please bring those back. And even the Duelist Pack starter boxes and Battle Pack draft boxes. It felt like there was more of a variety in options for sealed products outside of just booster packs and booster boxes, and they all felt unique in their own identity. Why did we move away from that? Well, I believe there is one product in particular that may have changed the course of Yu-Gi-Oh! products forever. It is probably the strangest and out of left field product that we as players have ever received, but I believe it to be an example of the absolute best of what Konami could offer us. The Noble Knights of the Round Table box set is the best Yu-Gi-Oh! product ever, but its market failure was the catalyst for what our Yu-Gi-Oh! products look like today. A nearly decade-old product, having premiered in late November of 2014, this special box set was themed around the titular Noble Knight archetype. What's in the box? The box set contained a fully constructed 40-card main deck and 3-card extra deck, with all cards sporting the brand new Platinum Rarity. A Noble Knight stylized rubber playmat, new card sleeves featuring the artwork of the Noble Knights of the Round Table field spell, and a thematic deck box. On top of all of that, this set premiered three new support cards for the archetype in the monsters Merlin and Noble Knight Bedwetter and the spell card Last Chapter of the Noble Knights. Outside of Noble Knights, each box in the US release featured an exclusive booster pack containing three cards of a six card set, known as the Power Up Pack, a specially drafted subset of cards that could be added to the Noble Knight deck to improve it for tournament play. In all Platinum Rarity, the power-up set included Effect Veiler, Mystical Space Typhoon, Gold Sarcophagus, Forbidden Lance, Torrential Tribute, and Compulsory Evacuation Device, all sought after meta-relevant staples of the time. That all sounds fantastic. This is quite literally the perfect starter kit for a new or vetted player, containing everything that they would need to start playing the game at a sanctioned event level. So what went wrong? Why did the product ultimately fail and we would never see anything like it again? In 2014, the Noble Knights of the Round Table box set retailed for a whopping $49.99. One, this was by far the most expensive official Yu-Gi-Oh! product that a player could purchase. Two, adjusted for inflation to today's money, this product would retail for $66.34. Still maintained at being the most expensive actual TCG product that money can buy. No, the stupid platinum cards don't count. And for 50 bucks, the deck wasn't really good at all. The Noble Knights were mishandled in their premiere to the TCG, with several lacking in size waves of support starting in Galactic Overlord. By the time the player base had access to the complete Noble Knight archetype, which was finalized with this box set's three premier support cards, it was too late. The Noble Knight archetype was past its prime, and its prime had never even began. So, the deck was bad for its time, and obviously even worse nowadays, but what else? Konami puts out bad structure decks all the time. How about that Platinum Rarity? Yeah, this is an example of Konami's piss-poor judgment when debuting a new rarity. I was personally a fan, but I'm in the minority, and can admit that it is extremely ugly to look at unless you're holding the cards in your hand. I believe the ideology was that when a Platinum Rare card was placed on the field, the card's artwork was highlighted to your opponent and the text box was highlighted to your perspective. But other than that, it was a dark and cloudy mess that made cards far too troublesome to identify, so no one wanted to play them. But as awful as it was, having a genuinely well-constructed, fully holographic deck probably justified the MSRP in Konami's eyes. So the deck was bad, the new rarity kind of sucked, what else? And am I still making a case for this being the best product ever? Yes, indeed. 
Whenever we get a new structure deck release, no matter how terrible the deck is expected to be, players can generally look forward to really solid reprints for meta staples at common, making them much more accessible and affordable on the secondary market. Let's be honest, a new OG Noble Knight structure deck could be announced tomorrow, and no matter how trash it is, if there are at least five needed reprints in there of generic and currently expensive cards, we'll eat it up. That being said, the reprints coming from this deck were kinda ass. Because the deck leaned almost entirely into the Noble Knights theme, in archetype cards for Noble Knights made up the large majority of its components. Not to say that they were all bad cards, because players could find the guaranteed reprints of Foolish Burial, Solemn Warning, Dimensional Prison, Call of the Haunted, and Reinforcement of the Army. Great cards! At a rarity that no one wants to play of their own will. See the problem here? Overall, it was a good product. It was a great product, and I stand by calling it the best product that we've ever had, but it was executed very poorly. A bad deck, a bad rarity, mediocre accessories needed or not, and a jaw-dropping price tag. That being said, the formula is nearly perfect for a product that realistically we should be getting at least once if not twice a year. To Konami's credit, they pretty much honed in on how to put out a decent structure deck. Although I'm not a huge fan of how players essentially need to buy three copies of a structure deck, they figured out a format that works. If a product like this were to be reinstated in our usual rotation of sealed products, it feels like a better way to incentivize players to also pick up the thematic playmat and sleeve set that they've been doing recently, which would be included with the box set alongside a brand new structure deck for the featured archetype. I would support a collection of two or three of these thematic starter kits replacing the deck builder sets that we get as those tend to be very lackluster. The glaring issue overall is the price tag, especially being marketed as a starter product, that $50 to $65 MSRP needs to go away. When we look at the previous iterations of the accessory collections we've received from the Egyptian Gods, Magic Karibo, Dark Magician Girl, Elemental Hero, the deck boxes have all originally retailed for $10. The sleeves were about $7, and the playmat at $15. I'm obviously not counting the portfolio because there isn't necessarily a reason to include it in this type of box set. A typical structure deck retails for 10 to 12 bucks, so altogether that's putting the retail value at 40 to 45. And while that's already under the retail of the Noble Knights box, I think $30 would be better received by the player base, new and old. A $30 entry fee isn't totally outrageous so long as the deck is actually competent and for good measure we keep it fully holographic. Just stay away from the Platinum Rarity, you feel me? There's a lot that you could do with a product like this that benefits every part of the spectrum of Yu-Gi-Oh! players. At the end of the day though, it is up to Konami to recognize that and push it forward. So the next time you complain about Konami and Yu-Gi-Oh! not being new player friendly, just remember, we had a chance. And we blew it. But. That's going to wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think is the best product that we have ever seen in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? I've got my bets on a lot of people saying Dual Devastator, and I'm kind of right there with you. Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing off.